Elon Musk fired four Twitter executives for cause as part of apparent attempt to avoid paying out millions in severance and stock options as it's revealed he's instituting rapid layoffs across the company to avoid similar payouts to regular employees. And like we're talking about like millions and millions of dollars right here, right? So let's get into it. So Elon Musk fired four senior Twitter executives for cause, according to a report, and an apparent bid to avoid having to pay them multi-million dollar severance packages. Musk, 51, took control of Twitter on Thursday on completion of the contentious $44 billion deal. He immediately fired the CEO, chief financial officer, head of legal, and general counsel. Twitter securities filings show that senior executives are entitled to a year's pay and accelerated vesting of at least a portion of their invested stock awards if they are fired for any reason other than cause within a year of a company changing hands. Parag Agrawal, the CEO who reportedly clashed with Musk over the number of users Twitter has, was reported to be walking away from his job with $42 million after being a chief executive officer for just under a year. Twitter's former top lawyer, Vijaya Gade, who earned $17 million in 2021, was reportedly in tears in April when Musk takeover first came to light. She was in line for a $12.5 million payout, Insider said. Ex-CFO Ned Siegel, who was the man behind Donald Trump's Twitter ban, was expected to receive $25.4 million after being fired by Musk on Thursday evening. The payout for the general counsel, Sean Edgett, was unknown. But Musk's reason for firing the four for cause was not known, the information reported. Firing the four for cause will likely lead to them challenging Musk in court. It was also reported on Saturday that Musk will soon begin firing other members of staff in part to avoid a November 1st distribution of stock grants to employees. Musk has said multiple times that he plans on trimming down the company and making it profitable. And ever since his takeover was first raised in April, staff have braced themselves for job losses. In his securities filing on April 14th, Musk said he did not have confidence in Twitter's management and initially vowed to sack 75% of the workforce when he formally bought the tech giant. And I said this before, I don't understand why a tech company needs to have 7,500 employees. That literally does not make any sense. So on Saturday, the New York Times said the losses could come immediately, in part to skirt the November 1st deadline. Four sources told the paper that some managers are being asked to drop lists of employees to cut, as Musk tries to whittle down the staff members from its current 7,500. Musk on Saturday did not discuss his plans, instead tweeting about the delights of bread, pastry, and carbohydrates. Finally, the truth that carbs are amazing can be said on this platform. Hashtag free speech, he tweeted. He added, hashtag so brave. Musk is believed to have ordered the cuts across the company with some teams to be harder hit than others, said three of the people. It was not clear how many people would, let, would be let go, and just a day before being fired by Musk, Twitter lawyer Vijaya Gaddle was photographed glaring at her new boss in an awkward meetup with other employees at the headquarters coffee bar. Vijaya Gade, widely considered the head of censorship at Twitter, had been vocal in her criticism of Musk. She cried during a meeting in April after he first announced plans to buy the company. She was a well-known Democrat donor and was behind the decision to squash links to a New York Post story about Hunter Biden's incriminating laptop before the 2020 election. Musk had publicly slammed her for the decision. On Wednesday, she was spotted with Musk and others at the coffee bar at Twitter headquarters, and the next day, she was fired along with CEO Parag Agarwal and CFO Ned Siegel. But she walks away with a sizable payout, a total of $72 million in stocks that she owned, salary and benefits, and stocks that had not yet vested when she was in her position, but which are now paid out as part of the deal. 
MarketWatch reports that Gade, Agrawa, and Siegel took a, take a combined golden parachute of $204 million. Agrawal gets $66 million, and Siegel takes $65 million. Musk has not yet publicly named the replacements, but he's expected to act as an interim CEO, at least on a temporary basis. Friday also marked the return of Musk's friend, Kanye West, to Twitter after the trouble rapper was suspended on the platform. So as Musk ushered them out last night, he asked Tesla engineers to visit headquarters today to start rewriting the website's code, and among his plans to open source algorithms to increase transparency for users about how their data is used, suggest content to them, and to add an edit button for all. He also plans to allow President Trump back on the site, and Trump welcomed his takeover on Friday, writing on his own social media site, Truth Social, Truth Social has become sort of a phenomenon. Last week, it had bigger numbers than all other platforms, including TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and the rest. It also looks and works better to my eye. I am very happy that Twitter is now in sane hands and would no longer be run by radical left lunatics and maniacs that truly hate our country. Twitter must now work hard to rid itself of all the bots and fake accounts that have hurt it so badly. It would be much smaller, but better. I love truth. Conservative figures who were banned from the platform now hope that his stated commitment to free speech will allow them to return. The big names booted from Twitter include Donald Trump, Roger Stone, Alex Jones, Steve Bannon, and U.S. Rep. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Among those who have decried his plans as dangerous is the former head of global public policy, Colin Crow. He left Twitter in 2019, long before Musk had designs on the site, but told the New York Times is a back-to-the-future reversion to content rules circa 2010, but one that ignores the lived experience over the past decade. People eventually realize that the Wild West needs a sheriff, both for ensuring the safety of citizens, but also for enhancing the prospects for commerce. Twitter shares have risen steadily throughout the week in anticipation of the takeover, but they will be halted on Friday, right? Let's see. So Twitter's former top lawyer, Gade, who earned $17 million in 2021, was reportedly in tears in April, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But yeah, see, the main thing to really understand is like, if Elon is able to get away with, you know, firing everyone extremely quickly to avoid all these massive payouts, he could quite literally save the company hundreds of millions of dollars, right? It's a crazy amount of money. And to be frank, I don't know why on earth, you know, the CEO, the head lawyer or whatever were getting paid like twenty, thirty, forty million dollars. Like it's crazy. Let's see. Let's see some of the comments. Yep, time to clean out the ultra wokies who hate free speech, don't feel an ounce of compassion for any of them. Shutting down free speech and banning any commentary on Hunter Biden is worrying indiscretions prior to the election is and was outrageous a scar on humanity. Interesting. I hope none of them get another dime. Bravo. I am so happy he fired Vijaya Gade. She created the ultra left wing environment, deleting and banning any dissenting users. I've never really got Twitter, tried it, didn't like it, moved on. For some, though, it was like some sacred platform of social media. But I constantly read about people being offended, bullied, and canceled. It seems to me like a cesspit of negativity. Which, like, that's another thing that I never really understood either, right? Because why would you use a platform that you know that you're just going to be annoyed on? I don't feel sorry for multi-millionaires that lose their job. They will be fine. Interesting. Feel free to give your point of view on this if you stumble upon this. Like, we're talking about, like, millions and millions of dollars. But also, we're talking about people's jobs. So how would you view this situation? But also, this is why everyone needs an emergency fund. 
in case you get fired.